Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm certainly excited to talk about the 2019 season. And I wanted to start by introducing you to our staff. We have two new members on staff. Uh, Lisa Navas, our associate head coach, has been here seven years now. Uh, Kayla Jackson is our new hitting coach. She's a two-time South Carolina grad, and we're excited to have her uh, back on staff with us. And then Taylor White joins us as our volunteer coach. She's in her first year and just finished an outstanding playing career at North Carolina. So I'm excited about the addition of our new staff, and I'm looking forward to the season. I noticed yesterday in particular it was 84 degrees in Puerto Vallarta. So uh, we opened in, in two and a half weeks in Puerto Vallarta, and we're excited to get started. Uh, this is a great, great group of uh, returners we have coming back from last year's Super Regional team. I think primarily when you look at our group, any coach is going to be excited when you can say my entire pitching staff returns. So our pitching staff returns. Uh, they had had the lowest ERA since my time here. So I've got a, a great core group of pitchers in senior Dixie Rayleigh, junior KK Drotar, and sophomore, uh, she made the all-freshman team, Kelsey O. Uh, we add two freshmen to that group, so I actually have five pitchers. Um, Rachel Vaughn, who's my first left-handed pitcher since I've been at South Carolina. And then Carly Heath, who is similar to KK in that she'll hit and pitch for us and was a South Carolina Player of the Year, Gatorade Player of the Year. So uh, I, I feel really good about the depth of our pitching staff. Uh, going around the field, our infield, we bring back the core part of our infield who, who had the highest uh, fielding percentage in school history. We turned the most double plays last year, and that core group is – Jana Johns, she was an all, all SEC defensive team member and all freshman team. Kenzie McGuire at shortstop and Mackenzie Bozel, who is an all SEC middle infield as well. So we're excited to have them back. And then uh, uh, for catchers, we've got, we're young behind the plate. I think that's, um, we're talented, uh, but young and inexperienced behind the plate. We still have positions open, I think, in the outfield, a lot of competition for two outfield spots and also first base, but uh, we, we bring back a group that was excellent on, on offense as well. So Kennedy Clark being the core of our, of our outfield there, she'll be, she'll be leading us in the outfield and left field. So uh, I'm excited to open up for questions um, for both Kennedy and, and Dixie and me too. So thank you for being here. Uh, Kennedy and Dixie, if you could both take this. Now, uh, after such a great season, you're going to have a lot of expectations on you this season, especially so much coming back. How do you start handling that from uh, you know the first game on? I mean, this is a new team, so we don't want to go off of last team, last year's team too much. But we just want to build off of last season and start in Puerto Vallarta, where we left off at Super Regionals. Yeah, one of the things we talked about uh, coming in this season was how we are a new team and it's a new year, and last year's success doesn't guarantee us anything this year. So uh, coming together with our new players that have been added and just building our own team for this year. Beverly, as the, coach, as the players said, kind of obviously every coach talks about a new year and stuff like that. And, They've obviously gotten your message. But when you have success like you did last year, as a coach, what is your challenge to, to build on that and, and acknowledge that it's been done before and you just came up a little couple games short of where you want to go? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's been motivating for this group. I think you've seen this, this 2019 team come in highly motivated. Uh, they've come in very confident because uh, they recognize the success they had last year. But... Uh, let me tell you, they've, they earned it. They worked for it last season, and, and their work ethic hasn't changed. This team works extremely hard. Obviously, we have to put it together on, on game day, score runs on game day, and continue to play uh, good defense and pitch well. But, uh, but when, you, when you think about it, um, every team's got to come up with their, with their own identity, and we've added a group of freshmen that are very talented, and I think the seniors have done a nice job setting what the tone and work ethic is at practice, and uh, they're just coming in and motivated with some new goals. The other real difference, I think, is last year we were picked 12th in the league, and uh, that was a motivation for us. We could kind of be the underdog, and I don't think we get that luxury this year. So this team recognizes that we're going to go into situations uh, where we might have a target on our back, and we've got to go in and play play with that uh, 
confidence and pressure, if you will. Uh, and I, our team understands that. So um, I think they, they understand that all games count one, and we've got to go in with our best game every time. Bev, you talked about the staff uh, additions. Um, how did Kayla joining the staff come to be, and what do you think she'll bring to, to the team? Well, I think it's been a, a fantastic transition. Our players, you know, our success offensively last year was a direct result of the hard work our players uh, put in. I thought we had a nice year offensively. Uh, we had we hit a few more home runs last year and RBIs, but uh, our players have been putting in the work and it, and it paid off. And with Coach Jackson coming in, that work ethic has remained consistent. I think our players are getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one and individual time with her, and I think the – um, her dedication to the Gamecocks has translated really well, and, and they are all ears and have bought in, into her and her philosophy. And you mentioned catcher, first base, and two outfield positions maybe up for grabs. Are there contenders leading people in those spots that you see, or, or is that still to be determined? Well, we've got two more weeks left. It's definitely to be determined. I think um, one player that has stood out to me recently has been Lauren Stewart. Uh, she didn't get a lot of playing time last year. Uh, she redshirted with an injury, and she's back and healthy and really see her improving every day. So uh, I would look for her probably to start and center. She's, she's really done a nice job offensively and defensively. And then I think that's a nice thing about the freshman group that we have. We're going to have a lot of options. We're very athletic. We run well. Uh, we have a freshman, Maddie Owens, uh, who – is very similar to Kristen White, who graduated, where we could probably put her anywhere on the field. So she's taking some reps at first base. We have Katie Preble, who's a transfer player for us. She was an All-American last year at Gardner-Webb, who swings a great stick. So I'm all about trying to find a spot for a big bat. So um, Katie Preble's taking reps at first base and in the outfield as well. So um, the nice thing is we've, we've got a lot of options. And Kennedy, how different will it be not having, uh, you know, the Tierra and uh, Cameron next to you in the outfield, you know, a new group, what's it like forming chemistry within a whole new uh, unit? You know, I'll miss Cam and Duffy for sure, but, um, you know, they're a younger outfield, and I can pass on things that I've learned in the past three years in the outfield, so it's good we can mold it the way we want outfield to be, just like work ethic, going hard for every ball. Um, but I mesh well with all the outfielders, whoever, even – Maddie, who's been going back and forth kind of everywhere, she fits in well. Like all the girls, um, wherever they're put, they go hard everywhere. So the chemistry with the outfielders are good. Bev, you mentioned it earlier, you will have five pitchers. Just how unique is that in the game to have that many arms on one softball team? Well, it's certainly unique for me. I haven't had that since I've been here. But uh, having a staff of three, I would have considered three number ones last year. It really allows you for great matchups. You can uh, match up pitchers against certain opponents. Uh, we didn't wear out our pitching. And I think, as you saw in the World Series last year, teams that were successful had a staff or they had strong, uh, a strong two and a three. Uh, the fact that we have five, it just gives us so many options. And I think our group has really bought into the philosophy of a staff and understanding that Dixie, Dixie could open with Kelsey O to close, and that's a great that's a great matchup. So I think we'll be able to do a lot of different things all season long. And when you look at a 56 game playing season, having a deep staff is, is will pay dividends for us. But uh, we're very talented, and I like the experience that we bring back we bring back on the mound with a seasoned group of pitchers. For the players, just what did you learn about being on that stage last year in the Super Regional, and what what things can you take from from that experience that you can use into this year? It's definitely motivation to get back there. Um, the feeling that you have playing in those games, the stage is kind of bigger, but um, most of all, is motivation just because it's such a unique experience to be in and to share that with your teammates, and it's the goal. So, yeah. <clears throat> We were just, uh, it was kind of a tease. We were so close to where we wanted to be. Um, but we know now, like, what it takes to get there and to pass that level. Um, but it definitely was a bigger scale. And 
we know we could have done a little different in the season. We one loss, one bad loss brought us from playing at ASU, then playing at home. And I think the goal was to play at home. We love playing at home. We love our fans. So we know what it takes to where we want to go. So uh, World Series is our goal this year for sure. Beverly, there's no doubt you now the SEC is the hardest softball conference to play in year in, year out. When you look back at almost a decade here and you, you see and look back what you've been able to accomplish so far, you know, how satisfying is that for you that now you can go into a season and you can compete and be a legitimate contender instead of being at sort of the, the bottom behind you know, the Florida Tennessees and Kentuckys of the world? No doubt, the SEC is the toughest conference in the country. And even when you're at the bottom of the league, you're still talking about teams that are ranked nationally in the top 25. You know, you have to remember the 13th team in our league went to the NCAA tournament last year. So it's, a, it's extremely competitive. And, uh, you know, we talk about being in the top four of our league because we want that, that buy going into the SEC tournament. And that was something that our players were able to accomplish last year. But, but for me as a coach, it's been very rewarding to see – Every single year, this team continues to improve. And I think uh, through the experience, they see what it takes to get through the grind of an SEC season. They get to see the difference of you know, one great pitch, one swing, how that can make a difference in, in the ball game. But there's no doubt that going through the SEC season, it prepares you for postseason. And so I felt uh, very – this team felt very prepared heading in into postseason. And I think what the 2018 team brought was – how competitive we can be within the league too. So I think it's just going to go on to uh, propel the, re the rest of the teams that are coming forward. But uh, there's no doubt that this year's group, and that was one thing we said last year, was, you know, can can you can you believe in something without without seeing it? And in this in 2018 they did. And um, hosting at South Carolina was a big goal of ours, and they saw what it took to be a 16 to get in that top 16 seed, that had been a goal. And the fact that uh, we were the number nine national seed and could co host at home was giant because now every class is going to want to repeat that, to be home at Beckham Field in front of our fans because that was fantastic to start postseason at home. A big piece of last season was Matt and his hitting approach. Obviously, he's no longer here. How much will Kayla try to keep some of those same principles, or will it be a completely different hitting approach? Well, I think last year's success, you know, when you have a successful season, so many things have to go right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, and I, th I think that included the offense last year. Um, you know, I I'm not going to take any power away from our players who got out there and uh, earned those base hits and the on-base percentage that they had because I'm telling you, um, this, this team was a, a result of a lot of hard work with recruiting. Our players come in, they put in the work, they took the swings, and, uh, and they did it on game day, and that's the part that counted. So I'm super proud of our team and what they did. Um, you know, for me, when the, when the players are successful, I think it's all about the players and their buy-in and, and what they do on game day. Um, coaches are really just there to, to support them. So there's no doubt that Coach Jackson, like I said, she has the attention of the hitters. Uh, it's been a very positive transition, and I would expect our offensive numbers to continue to improve. Anything else? Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.